so I'm particularly interested in learning uh, about um, what I eat and what, what are the things that I can do that can sort of help me control these arrhythmias. So my experiment is, uh, was uh, basically going vegan during the month of, of December. Um, I'm going to go through it um, briefly here. So uh, there, there are basically three, um, <coughs> three, three things that sort of inspired me to do this. Number one was the results that I got from 23andMe. Uh, a documentary that I that I watched called Fork Over Knives. Forks Over Knives. I'm not sure if anybody here has seen this uh, documentary. Um, and uh, and a, a talk that I heard in, in at the Quantified Self Silicon Valley uh, by Paul Sass, um, in which he set out to photograph all of the uh, the foods that he ate. Is Paul here tonight? No. Okay. So uh, so um, the the the, uh, the 23 andme gives you one of the one of the things that they do when they look at your your genetic risks, uh, it looks at your uh, disease risk, when, it, when they look at your genome, uh, rather. Uh, they got the two things like right, atrial fibrillation is something I have, um, and psoriasis as well. And number three and five and six there are uh, three different types of uh, cancer of the digestive system, and that, got really, that really got my attention. Now, uh, coincidentally, at the same time, I got this uh, video that I watched from a fr friend of mine gave me the DVD, and uh, it, it, it talks about and creates, makes the case for the, the relation between uh, cancers and heart disease and eating animal protein. And so, and it's very biased uh, toward uh, veganism, but um, it, it sort of like helped me kind of see things in a different way. Being, you know, I'm from Brazil and we eat a lot of meat in Brazil and I was raised that way and never even thought of thinking of, of eating differently. So uh, Paul says, and that's not me, <laughs> it's a Photoshop job. But um, Paul, Paul in his talk, Paul Saz said, uh, I'm, 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 uh, I'm not a data nudist. Um, but, but I figured, I thought, you know, for me to, to really attain this goal and really do this thing, I, I'm going to have to be really open about this and really be a, a data nudist. So what I, I figured, I would post all the photographs and photograph everything that I would eat during the month of December um, as I went into this challenge of eating a vegan diet and, uh, and post everything on Flickr and on social media. If you want to see, I'm, there's no time to go through every single photo. There's 265 photographs. Uh, but if you want to see the entire collection, it's on uh, Vegan in December, Bitly, uh, Vegan in December. So what did I set out to do? And uh, by the way, and I'll be showing you some samples of some of the things. I, I picked uh, random <laughs> photos. So I, the idea was to cut, out all, to cut all the uh, animal products during December, and, uh, and just for good measure, alcohol and caffeine. Um, uh, caffeine, I, I have been not drinking or having any caffeine since September of last year. So it wasn't, that wasn't too hard. Um, so how did I do it? I tried, tried to be like, answer uh, Gary's uh, sort of questions. So how did, I, how did I do this thing? So the, the philosophy was, if I am too embarrassed to photograph it, I should probably not be sharing, I mean, in sharing it with the world, I should not be uh, eating it. So, um, and, and so I, I would basically, you know, on December 1st, I put all that stuff on. I made the, the public con contract, put it on social media via, everywhere, on Twitter and on Facebook, and I said, I'm going to do this. And, um, and, uh, and, 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 and I set out, set, set out to do this. So the task was to photograph everything that went into my mouth, no matter how small. And uh, uh, I just didn't photograph any water that I drank. And if I did photograph second helpings, uh, although I was very um, concerned about making the photos look nice. So second helpings a lot of times don't look very nice. So uh, there aren't a lot of second helpings. I, st I stuck with, uh, with just, a, just a, I didn't want to eat something out of a dirty plate and have to photograph it. So, uh, but you know, it happened on occasions. You can see there by the, uh, the smoothie. Um, the goal was really, as I said before, it was very important to me to see if I, there was a correlation between eating animal, eating animal products and my cardiac arrhythmias um, and compare my cholesterol levels and also uh, hopefully drop a few pounds. So as you can see, I started off uh, at 213 pounds. Uh, this is the, the, the middle there is the log of my cardiac arrhythmias for six months before uh, December. 
uh, you can see that in November I had just one event, four events in October, zero events in September, and one event in the months before that, and my LDL cholesterol was 124. What made it easy for me to do this was that my partner did it with me, and, and uh, I, I, we both worked from home so we could cook, and that, that was very helpful. And, uh, um, and knowing that this would end in December, uh, it, 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 you know, I planned for steak and, and a glass of champagne on January 1st. But I'm just, I'm, I, in fact, you know, a week into it, I was kind of ready for it to be over. <laughs> um, so what made it challenging was uh, changing, old, uh, changing old habits, uh, eating, old eating habits. I'm, I'm somebody who loves uh, baguette with butter and I am all my life and I, it's probably the, the number one food I, I ate my entire life. Uh, so eliminating some of these foods was difficult, milk chocolate bars and cookies and flan. Um, so, and, and also another thing that made it hard was social interactions. So uh, I, had to, I, I would find myself having, having to explain it to people, why are you doing this? Why in December? Uh, well, you know, it, it was exhausting to have to explain it. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and a lot of times it was awkward to photograph foods at parties, especially and there were a lot of stuff, a lot of events happening in December, and, uh, and it was hard to, uh, to photograph all the foods and, and it, you know, in, in a party with a friend and things like that. Um, and adding the descriptions, uh, the, 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 the collection that I have on Flickr has all of the, uh, the descriptions of everything I ate, and that was very laborious. So it's unsustainable. So sometimes on, uh, on, uh, in parties or events that I went to, uh, there would be a lot of choices. I could eat around things. Um, and, uh, but sometimes there were no choices. And, and I went to this thing, and there was absolutely nothing I could eat except for apple cider. So I drank apple cider all night. Um, I wasn't too happy about it. I was ravenous when I got home. I just ate a, a bunch. And so um, there are 265 photos. Now, some days um, I took a, as, as many as 15 photographs, and some days I took only four. Uh, it's kind of, uh, this really didn't even come, I didn't even real, realize this until I put these slides together. Uh, it's kind of interesting, and I don't know why that is. Um, but what did I learn with this? So I, uh, it, I, it worked out pretty well. I mean, I ate surprisingly well. It wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. I wasn't too hungry. I had some headaches at the beginning of the first four days and some stomach ache, like um, headaches like uh, caffeine withdrawal, withdrawal headaches, which I would make no sense, but I, I had those. Um, and uh, it was, uh, you know, I figured it because I did it in for the month of December, it was really easy to, to do it. You know, I, I mean, it was... You know, I, when things were hard, I would think, gosh, I, don't know, I can do it. And it's just another week. It's just another two weeks. And so, um, it's, so these are the things that I, I learned. In a, increments of time, it's, it's a lot easier to do these things. And if I can do it in December, uh, that was a pretty tough month. I, I can do it any time. Here are some of the unexpected findings. The social uh, sort of support was incredible. Um, I got a lot of encouragement from friends uh, on Facebook. Um, and on Twitter, and, and, uh, and a lot of people, it was great too, because a lot of people felt inspired by it, and, and they, they thought, gosh, you know, Hugo's doing this, I'm, I'm gonna do it too, and, and I was like, wow. And then that made me feel like, gosh, now I can't really drop the ball, because there's all these people following me, and they think I'm, you know, I'm like the guru of eating vegan, and so, <laughs> and so uh, it, it really put the pressure on me. Um, so, so in closing, um, unfortunately, <laughs> found no correlations with my arrhythmia. The month of December, I had one event that was significant, um, and, and uh, you can see there's uh, there's nothing there's, there's nothing there that I can that I can say there is a, an obvious obvious correlation. Um, the weight was a little bit um, encouraging. I lost six pounds on, on that month. Um, I, I have continued on the diet. I, I did so well, and I'm actually I kind of got used to it, and so I, I've been doing it. So I'm at 199 today. Uh, I, I keep on losing it. And uh, my LDL cholesterol was the most significant change. It dropped by 36%. So I'm, uh, this was a test that was just done last week or two weeks ago. Oh, wait, last week, right? Uh, the February 10th. And uh, my, my LDL cholesterol is 80. I, I was surprised. And I said, gosh, this, this is enough to keep me on this diet. Um, so final thoughts. So social media uh, kept me honest. Uh, it, you know, I don't think I would have done uh, as well, I was able to, would be able to pull it through if I hadn't really uh, publicized it and put it online and really opened it up and being a data nudist. Um, social support also kept me motivated and engaged. And uh, the other thing is that I, I realized that uh, uh, you know making food pretty is kind of fun, and and uh, I think you eat a lot well and really enjoy your food a lot more, and you can pull things off like this. 
if you really take the time to enjoy your food and, and make it look attractive. So, um, so that's it. So thank you so much. If you're interested in seeing uh, more of the uh, the pictures, it's on um, Bitly, Vegan in December. Thank you. So much. Questions for you before we open it up. One is, I think you should explain how you have access to your um, arrhythmia data. Right. And number two, clearly, since you keep doing it, you felt that overall it had a good effect on your well-being. And you know, this contradicts a little bit the sense that like you could only do it because it was coming to an end in December. So I wonder, right. I think you should maybe talk about that for a minute too. But start with the heart data. Right. Well, the heart data is a, I get the heart data because I have an implantable cardioverter defibrillator. It's a sort of like a pacemaker that's implanted into my body. It's got a couple wires into my heart and it records every heartbeat. I don't have access to this data. And it's, <laughs> it's been a, a point of contention. Yeah, I've been yeah. uh, working really hard at trying to get this data. It's yeah, been right. two years. Um, but um, I, uh, uh, the, the, the report that I get, I get this, the, this report is coincidentally, I had this report printed out on uh, uh, February, 20, uh, February 16th. So the report of the arrhythmias is very recent. And I track my own symptomatic arrhythmias with, uh, with Google Docs and, uh, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, in a form that I have on my access to on my phone. So, it, so, but, you know, so, I, so I, I compare the, the reports that I get from the doctor every six to 12 months which is what I showed you, and this is accurate data, uh, with the, the a little bit inaccurate data that I record on my own. And I map those, and that's how I get some feedback. And uh, with, with regards to the well-being, my well-being, and the fact that right? You continue. Right. I think I think doing it for December gave me courage. That's really what it was. I, you know, if I if somebody had said to me, oh, you know, you know, you it's you, you just gotta do this. You know, change your diet. It's like. Gosh, you know, the, the thought of like eating a, 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 a you know a vegan diet as, as I expected it to be, and I was really misinformed about it as well. Uh, but eating that uh, for the rest of my life was something that I thought, gosh, this is not really something I am interested in doing. And so doing it for the month of December really felt like you, I could commit to that. I can commit to a month, and I can do it. A month is doable and that was that's what I thought and I did really well in it and I thought you know what I can do longer than a month and so I keep doing it in, in increments of a month and so I, I don't know yet if I'll be um, if I'll eat a, a plant-based diet for the rest of my life but I, I'm so far I feel great on it and I, I plan on keep doing it great let's open it up Is Sarah repeat that is your partner still um, eating the game uh, no, not as much. So he um, he still eats vegan at home because I do most of the cooking. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> so, uh, but um, but when when we're out, uh, and, oh, he's, he's welcome to do whatever. My, you know, my, when we're out, he sometimes eats um, seafood or or eggs, and um, but uh, we haven't really eaten um, drink drunk milk or. You know, okay, let's that. Uh, great talk you. Thank you. Um, could you go back to the, uh, the blood results slide? Uh, so okay. Yeah. So there's two things that has me a little have me a little worried here. Um, your HDL cholesterol has gone down, as we right. know. HDL is very cardioprotective. Right. Additionally, your triglycerides have gone up, and what a lot of physicians look at uh, for um, uh, heart disease risk is right. that ratio of triglycerides mm -hmm. to HDL. So you've actually increased. Your, according to them, you've increased your risk by 25%. Right. So that is something right. to look at, um, especially. What, which line are you looking at, sorry? So if you take your triglycerides and right. divide them by your HDL, right. uh, that is a, a known right. risk factor for heart disease. Right. And so according to your data, right. you've increased that 25%. Right. So that, that's something for, for you in the context of your arrhythmia to definitely right. keep an eye on. Right. Um, the other thing that, that kind of worries me is, is while you you appear you know you've lost weight and right. you've seen all these other things, how much is actually attributable to you cleaning up your diet versus a vegan diet? Right, right. So so I so I, I wasn't aware of that. So this was this is the data that the first as 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 to uh, your, the first part of your question. So this was reviewed by my cardiologist. So I'll, I'll follow up and thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. So. Um, 
with regards to the loss of weight, you're probably right. Uh, I ate a lot of bread. And by cutting butter, it, it, it took away the kind of joy <laughs> of eating bread. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. so, so I just don't find eating bread as exciting anymore. <laughs> so I don't eat as much bread. And so, and what? One of the things that you've done by removing butter is you probably lower your HDL because of that. So yeah, H HDL, right. lots of saturated fats, tends to raise uh, right. the cardioprotective uh, good cholesterol in the right. bloodstream. So that might be something uh, you know if you don't want to go back to butter, maybe right. cooking your vegetables with ghee right. or butter, something like that. Right. So let's go over here. No? Okay. Yeah. So back to the arrhythmia data. Did you say that you? have not been able to get it, like you've asked them for it, and they just told you. Thank you for that question. You, know. I, you should talk for a minute about the saga of trying to get your data out of your own device. It's implanted in your body. Right, so, um, right. So, th so th there is, uh, currently, there is, the, the, the data that is collected uh, by these implantable devices uh, is not, I mean, patients don't have access to it. So you, you have access to reports once they make the way into uh, the um, into your electronic medical record or into your medical records, you can ask uh, your hospital, your clinic, your doctor for that, and they'll give you a copy of that report. Uh, but not the data itself. The data that is collected remotely, by the way, these devices are wireless. There is a bedside monitor that sits next to the, the patient's bed, uh, and the data is transmitted uh, wirelessly overnight. Um, to the device and then transmit it to the manufacturer of the, the, the device. And the device has that, the, the manufacturer uses this data for post market surveillance of their products. Uh, they use the data to do a lot of useful research. And, uh, and that data is then made available to the clinician who takes care of the patient. But the patient doesn't have access to it. And that has been a point of contention with me. So, so, what's the reasoning behind that? Is that something the medical device company has imposed on anyone who? Purchases their device, or is it an FDA? Right. Well, no, the FDA uh, has no jurisdiction over it. The FDA says we it's outside of our purview. Um, the FDA does not regulate the data that is collected and stored by by these uh, medical device companies from our bodies. So um, the FDA basically says, "Are you on your own?" Um, and the medical devices say, "Well, I can't really give you the data without your doctor's permission." And uh, so we're it's it's in a it's in a weird place. So, but we're I think I, I'm saying we're fucking ridiculous. Right, <laughs> <laughs> right. It's it's starting. We're cracking it. We're cracking it. So there is there's by the way I've been in, I was interviewed by NPR. There's a lot of press. There's been a lot of press yeah. about this. If you Google my name and ICD, there's uh, there's a lot of people are it's it's starting to crack. It really is, and it's wonderful to see. Uh, and uh, so I was interviewed for, there was going to be an, an NPR show on, a KQED on, on Monday morning about this. And it's a, a long piece on a morning uh, program um, about this. And, and so in which uh, the manufacturer of my implantable device, that's Medtronic, uh, is, is interviewed by it. And I, I don't quite know yet what, they, what their response was uh, to the Great. Question. We have time for just a couple more questions. So with, with some, Eric. Um Hi, Hugo. That was a beautiful talk. And I almost feel bad going back from the issue about freeing your data, which is much more crucial. But I am curious about your diet and how closely you were paying attention to nutrition. For example, did you make sure that you got um, a comparable amount of protein on the vegan diet versus the other? Or were you just eating what tasted good? Right. Um, I, I was I was focusing. Thank you. I was focusing on uh, on eating variety. No, I wasn't really specifically thinking about oh this has protein or it doesn't. No, I didn't think anything about that. So my 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 focus during the month of December was to make pre to make pretty photographs. <laughs> uh, eat, eat variety. Eat a lot of things that looked interesting, and uh, um, and try new things and and so. I, I ate a lot. I I feel like I ate a lot better than I than I, you know. It, it hasn't. It didn't really change a, a whole lot from what I ate before, except that I cut a lot of the bread. Uh, I cut a lot of the cakes that I would eat, and a lot of the processed foods. And I ate a lot more kale, variety of different types of vegetables uh, that I didn't eat before, uh, and no meat. And so, it, I, yeah. So I, I feel like the only things that I cut out were bad things. Great, great. Misha, last question. Yeah. So did you 
uh, have you kept taking pictures and posting stuff, or did you stop? And was it is it better without doing it, or or, or harder? Oh right. Uh, so um, I I did for the month of December. I did I did all that. After that, I I was just sick of logging everything, and uh, so it was just too laborious. Yeah. And uh, especially writing all the descriptions. And so. And do you uh, miss the positive <coughs> feedback that people were giving you online, or are you just happy? No, people kept on, kept on. Now, now, sort of, I created this public perception that I that I eat vegan, right? <laughs> so, so I feel like I, it's hard for me to go back too. So, so I don't. I'm kind of stuck at it, and, and <laughs> with with this thing. And so, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know where I'm going uh, with this. I'm, I'm. I keep on doing it, and so. Uh, I, I don't know, but I reserve the right to uh, eat a steak. <laughs> 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 I feel like. So why did you decide to, to go vegan, not just vegetarian? Uh, well, well, because I wanted to cut all animal products. They, they, because of the, the, the forks over knives, right. talks about uh, the uh, the link between caseine and cancer, hmm. and uh, and so and and, and there, there's a ton of stuff online that is hmm. kind of dispute. I mean, it's hard. It, it, it's hard to kind of know for yeah, sure. Okay. I don't know. Okay, we're going to go on to the next talk, and I just want to acknowledge the religious war between the vegans and the paleo. <laughs> <laughs> this is a live topic, and we can continue it just after, after the talks. Um.